Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course that knows it's all ball bearings nowadays. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about security devices. This is the first module from our Section 6, Section 6.1 specifically, where we're going to learn about what a network-based firewall is, a host-based firewall, an IDS, an IPS, and a VPN concentrator, all very important security devices. We'll start our tour by talking about a host-based firewall. These are firewalls that are pieces of software. They usually run on a machine that is protecting just that machine from everything going in and out across the network. This is a screenshot, for instance, for my Windows firewall that's on my Windows 7 system. So you can see this is all configured in software and allows me to make changes that way. What's nice about a firewall that's running on a local system is that it can see everything going in and out of that device and it sees it before it is encrypted to go across the network and after it is decrypted when it comes in. It also has the ability to be very granular. I can really get down to very specifics of certain applications can only use certain ports during certain times of the day, for instance. So very specific in the types of policies that I can set for that host-based firewall. When you get into large groups, though, this becomes a little bit more of a challenge. Almost every network-based firewall is managed centrally, but host-based firewalls are on all of your hosts. That makes it a little bit more of a challenge. There are usually configuration and management programs that will allow you to set policies on what's running on those machines out there on those firewalls, but you still need to be able to scale as this gets bigger. You need to set global policies across all of them. So it becomes really important in an enterprise that you do have that manageability. Here's an example of some of the outbound rules that are in my Windows firewall. And you can see now why it's really important to have that, that manageability. This is just on one machine. Imagine if you needed to change one or more of those rules on every machine in your environment. That becomes a little bit more tedious. And if you have an automated way to do that, it certainly helps. But look at all of the different options that I have. I can name this policy, what group of devices or applications it applies to, what type of profile it is, is it a profile that's enabled or not, am I allowing it, disallowing it based on this. A lot of different capabilities, a lot of different things I can do with inbound rules, outbound rules, or just monitoring what's going in and out of a system. Somebody's trying to scan the system, I can identify that with my host-based firewall and stop it dead in its tracks. Host-based firewalls are in a host, but the network-based firewalls are running on the network. So there's some different requirements for those devices. Those usually are filters of the traffic coming through. Usually we're filtering by a port number, like a TCP port or UDP port. There are also many firewalls that can filter up through the seven layers of the OSI model, where they will recognize what the application is going through the network and really examine it to determine, oh, well, that is Skype-type traffic, or that is a web browser traffic or the traffic there happens to be a peer-to-peer -peer application and it can decide what to do with that application when it receives it. It can also encrypt and decrypt the traffic going in and out. If you're running SSL, many of these large enterprise firewalls can break apart, decrypt the traffic, look inside of it, re-encrypt it, and send it on its way. So a lot of really advanced functionality, a lot of power, and a lot of speed in these network devices. Many firewalls can also proxy traffic. So they can receive a, a web browser command, for instance, make sure it's legitimate, control where it's going, and send the request out to the web server on behalf of the user. It receives the response, makes sure the response is okay for the user, and then provides the response back to the user. So it's a middleman to make sure that nothing bad is going out and nothing bad is coming in. Now most firewalls can also be routers. So this is a nice thing to have. You can put it on the edge of your network. Traffic is coming in from the internet and we can watch everything going inside of our network to the outside and vice versa. It's a perfect place to sit because you're really seeing all of the traffic going into and out of your network to and from the internet. These network-based firewalls are incredibly useful. They can protect everybody that's inside of your network at one time if you want them to. And they're very high speed. I can plug in a lot of bandwidth into these, de these devices and really just put a lot of traffic through them and be able to protect at very high rates of speed. Unfortunately, when you get into things going across the network, you're dealing with a lot of encryption. And these devices, since they're looking at network packets, have limited visibility into much of the encryption that's out there. And in the end of the day, it's yet another device you're putting on your network. If you lose your firewall, if that firewall dies for whatever reason, 
then you're going to lose connectivity unless you have some redundancy set up for those devices. So that may be a disadvantage, although if we add additional devices, additional firewalls to our network, we can have more redundancy and get around some of those problems. There's just an extra cost associated with doing that. Along with firewalls, we may have a need to see what's going in and out of our network from a vulnerability perspective. That's very important these days. And an IDS IPS stands for Intrusion Detection System and Intrusion Prevention System. The idea is that these devices would look for intrusions. These are things that would be bad for our systems internally. These would be buffer overflows. These would be exploits against our operating system. These would be things that would cause our devices to be owned, to be under complete control of whoever's attacking them. So we have specialized devices with these IDSs and IPSs that will locate these types of problems and identify that's going through the network. IDSs will just alarm. They'll send you an alert if something is happening. They can't actually stop anything. The latest generation of these things are IPSs, where it's the P is, it stands for prevention. We are stopping these vulnerabilities before they get inside of the network. We're stopping the buffer overflow. We are stopping these types of vulnerabilities against our operating systems. We're not only telling you that it's happening, we're preventing it from even coming in the door. So these can be really useful if you're under attack from a certain type of worm, if somebody's trying to take advantage of a lot of machines in your environment, this is the device to stop them. There's a number of advantages and disadvantages with IDSs and IPSs. One advantage you have, of course, is that we're looking at all of the network traffic going in and out of your network or around your network, and they can completely stop that bad traffic. They will stop it dead in its tracks, and you can have a lot of people trying to come in the door of your network, but as long as your IPS is in place, that traffic is going nowhere. Obviously, just like a firewall, we're looking at the network, and it is encrypted data going through that link. It is a single point of failure unless you add multiple redundant links in the network. So it's not a, a perfect solution to be able to see that, but it certainly works on the network side to stop a vast majority of what might be coming in the door. Another important security device that's in most environments is something called a VPN concentrator. So let's say you're out at Starbucks with your laptop and you don't have a direct access to what's going on in your network. After all, you've got a firewall on your network. There's no way people from the outside can come in. So what a VPN concentrator allows you to do is set up an encrypted tunnel, a private tunnel between your laptop and what we call a VPN concentrator. This VPN concentrator receives this encrypted data decrypts it and essentially drops you off on the inside network. So it gives you this special little peek into the network where you can then have access to your corporate resources, your file servers, your printers, and everything else. You're just going to build this tunnel from wherever you happen to be and whatever network link you happen to have across the internet. And what that means is that nobody in that coffee shop on this wireless network even if they captured the wireless packets, they'd have no idea what was inside of there because it's all encrypted. The VPN concentrator has specialized hardware inside of it that can very quickly decrypt that traffic and send it along on the inside in a form that the rest of the devices on your internal network are able to understand. It's no longer an encrypted uh, tunnel inside the network. It doesn't have to be. You trust what's inside of your network. Very nice in the way it works and allows multiple people from anywhere in the world to be able to safely and securely connect to your network and use the resources as if they were sitting inside of your network to begin with. Let's see what we've learned about some of these security devices. Our first question, what security feature resides on a device and protects against attacks? Well, we're sitting on a device, so that must be a host-based firewall. Let's do another question. What kind of device can stop vulnerabilities from entering your network? Stop some cold? And that would be an intrusion prevention system. And our last question, what kind of communication resides between remote devices and a VPN concentrator? We're sitting in our coffee shop. What type of communication is that? It is in a completely encrypted tunnel between our device, our laptop, and that VPN concentrator that's inside of our network. Well, that's what we needed to know for our N10-004 section 6.1. We've gone through network-based firewalls, host-based firewalls, IDSs, IPSs, and VPN concentrators. If you'd like to look through our library of Network Plus videos, if you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com. 